Welcome to Dwell in the Word. Today is Wednesday, May 11th in our part of the world. It's finally warming up so the coffee can be cold brew. Seeing that it is Wednesday, before we finish up 2 Corinthians today, let's open with a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. O Lord, from whom all good things do come, grant to us, your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding may we perform the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. As I said, we are finishing up 2 Corinthians today. So we are going to be taking a look at chapter 13. We're going to do the whole thing. That gives us verses 1 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord. This is the third time I am coming to you. Every charge must be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. I warned those who sinned before and all the others, and I warned them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again, I will not spare them, since you seek proof that Christ is speaking in me. He is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. For he was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but in dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves, or do not, or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test. I hope you will find out that we have not failed the test, but we pray to God that you may not do wrong, not that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong, your restoration is what we pray for. For this reason I write these things while I am away from you, that when I come I may not have to be severe in my use of the authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we finish up here, we see Paul giving us a nice summary of the point that he's really been making. We've been on quite a journey through 2 Corinthians here, seeing all of the emotions that have been involved, uh, essentially culminating in that last chapter when Paul told the story of his being taken into heaven uh, this is this has been a very interesting book, hasn't it? But there is a reason that he keeps on coming back to this idea of weakness. We see that here uh, in verse 4. He talks about Jesus uh, uh, going back to him and his example. For he was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. For we are also weak in him, but dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. Paul is trusting that God is at work, and he is saying, hey, look, the weaknesses that you see in me, the weaknesses that these super apostles are saying I have so that I must clearly not be the messenger from God. Look, our example is Christ, and in his weakness, he is the one who has saved us. And so Paul wants them to understand that, that this is why he keeps going back to his weakness and not boasting about the great things that they do, but instead boasting in the way that they've been persecuted, in the way they've been faithful, regardless of what has been happening to them. And then he turns it on them, doesn't he? We see that in verses 5 through 9. Examine yourselves. See whether you're in the faith. Faith. Test yourselves. Uh, do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is, you, is in you? Unless you, indeed you fail to meet the test. He's saying, hey, you have Jesus. And if you understood the power that he has, if you rested in him, you wouldn't be worried about these things of the flesh. You wouldn't be worried about uh, all the things that you are seeking. Instead, you would be finding comfort in the sufficiency of what he has done for you. And so, what does Paul say? He says that we pray to God that you may not do wrong. Not that we appear to have met the test. Not that it's, a, it's about them that you may do what is right, though we may have seemed to fail. He's not concerned about what they've done. He doesn't want them to be excellent examples of the faith so that he can brag about it or so that he can feel good about himself. What he wants is for them to be faithful because of what Christ has done. 
So what do we see here? Verse 9, for we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. They're not worried about themselves. What are they concerned about? The restoration of those who have sinned, the restoration of those who have maybe turned away from the faith following these super apostles. They are concerned about them and their coming back to Christ and trusting in him alone. And that is what our concern should be. As we look at this passage, we see some wonderful examples for us to apply. First of, first of all, well, we need to remember that, that in, when we feel weak, that or we feel tested, that we should remember what Christ endured, that it was in his weakness that we find our salvation. It was when he was tested with turning away that he, he sweat drops of blood and he went faithfully to the cross. And so when we are weak, we can look to his strength and trust that God is at work in us. And we also need to remember to examine ourselves, not for the purpose of questioning, oh no, am I really saved? But, but to say, how am I living out this faith that I have? How am I exhibiting the truth that the Holy Spirit has given me the gift of faith? So may we examine ourselves, may we consider this, and may we come out of that desiring to be a more faithful people, that Jesus might be glorified because he has saved us in weakness. May we be strong even though we have periods of weakness. May we move forward and trust in his strength, not in our own. Let's close with prayer. Try in God. We thank you for the grace that you have bestowed upon us by giving the gift of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that we would examine our lives and find ourselves to be faithful to the call that you have placed upon us. Build us up today through your word and spirit that we might glorify you in word and deed. Today we lift up to you the missionaries that our congregation supports. We lift up those that serve here in our nation and those that serve you in other parts of the world. We ask that you would bless them with the gift of perseverance as they desire to spread your word in a lost and dying world. And we especially pray for the work of our missionaries in the Netherlands. We ask that you would strengthen them, that you would bless their ministry, that you might help them to share your word. May they continue to do the work that you have put before them to do. And we praise and thank you that we have heard your word today. We ask that you would grant us faith to trust in the power that it has to work in our lives through your Holy Spirit. For we know that you are at work in your people to sanctify us and to conform us to the image of Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Okay, we've finished up 2 Corinthians. We're going to move on. We're going to flip the page in our Bibles, or in my case, I'll move the scroll wheel on to Galatians on Friday. We will see you then.